Good morning. Welcome. My name is Courtney Marshall. I'm the president and CEO of the Wichita State University Alumni Association. Today is the 50th anniversary of a tragedy that claimed the lives of 31 friends, family, and loved ones. Two planes, the gold plane and the black plane, departed Kansas headed to Utah. In one of the worst tragedies of college sports history, the gold plane, carrying 36 passengers and a crew of four, crashed on a Colorado mountainside while en route to Logan, Utah for a game with Utah State University. 29 persons died at the scene. The trainer, Tom Reeves, and football player, John Taylor, died later after receiving medical attention for their injuries. The co-pilot and eight players survived the plane crash. Even though those affected by the tragedy are geographically scattered, we are one, connected by October 2nd, 1970. We pause each October 2nd to pay tribute and remember the family and friends we hold dear. We pause to acknowledge the changes that the plane crash made in the lives of their families, their friends, and the university. Over the years since 1970, many of the Memorial 70 family and friends have passed away. One person that was not included in the 2019 acknowledgements was Coach Chuck Ramsey. Coach Ramsey passed away February 23, 2019 here in Wichita. To date, Carmen has not received notice of anyone passing away in 2020. But if you do have knowledge of other deaths in the Memorial 70 family, please forward that information to Carmen Heisch at carmen.hytche at wichita.edu. Melissa Hasty is in her third year as the Director of Campus Ministries at Wichita State. She earned a BA in History from Baker University and an MA in History from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Ms. Hasty will give the invocation today. Melissa. Good morning. Let us pray. Creator of life and love, we have gathered today to take a break from this crazy, chaotic year and remember. We take this time to share the stories, to renew connections, to mourn, to heal, and to celebrate. We remember the persons and the lives attached to each of these names that we will soon hear read. Beloved and missed friends, family, teammates, shockers. We take this time today to honor their all too brief journey with us, to remember how they touched our lives, and to give thanks for the lives we who remain have been blessed with. We come together because our connection to them and to each other matters. Remembering makes us human and it is through connections and remembrance that we can find our strength and healing. We pause in our diverse ways to ask a blessing on this moment, on this time, on this place, on those who are gathered here and those far flung, on all who remember, on families, friends, and on Wichita State. May this time of remembrance and fellowship inspire, comfort, and nourish us, that we might continue to grow in love and grace. Amen. Thank you. Welcome back to Wichita State alumni and friends. I welcome you back to campus and extend a welcome to Acting President Rick Muma. Dr. Muma? And if there are other faculty and staff in the audience, would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you for being here. Now I want to welcome John Euros to the microphone for a special acknowledgement. John. Uh, thank you. 50 years. Seems like it was just yesterday. John Putt, are you here? Stand up. 
if I can get through this. 50 years ago, it, in the afternoon in the mountains in Colorado, there was an accident. His word got to Evergreen, Colorado, and the Alpine rescue team. They gathered up their stuff, and they headed toward the site. That day, they picked up, as part of the team, a 12-year-old John Putt. 12 years old. He headed out with his guys to the crash site. When they got there, he was told to just go around the perimeter. Don't go near the site. Just go around the perimeter. Don't touch anything. He's 12. They don't want him to touch anything. As he's out around the outside, he comes across a wallet. He tells this story in the, in the documentary that's done a number of years ago. He found a wallet. And he picked it up. He'd already been told not to touch anything. But he picked it up. And then he looks at it. And he opens it up, and he looks inside, and it's a picture of a family. At that minute, his life changed. At that minute, he became part of our family. And for the last 50 years, he has done everything that we've asked him to do, still in Evergreen, still working for the Alpine rescue team. I called him recently. We took Rusty Featherstone and his family up there. John Putt shows, shows up. Rusty and his wife had a little bit of a problem going up there, right, Rusty? It took a little bit of time. John's there the whole time. Three weeks later, we have Ed Plop and the other group that, that came up. John shows up, opens up the gate, and unfortunately, we didn't get the gate open for Rusty. Opens up the gate, we go around, we make the climb, a couple dozen of us. He's done that time and time again. When Ronnie Johnson's dad wanted to go up at 83 years old, John was there. They bring four-wheel drive sometimes. They bring things to help get our people up there. He's been a part of our family. We thought it was important today that while he was here that we recognize him for what he's done for us over the years. John, we thank you. Thank you so much, John. Families were stunned by the loss of sons, daughters, brothers, and sisters. Many young children were devastated by the loss of one or both parents. If you're in the audience, please stand and be recognized as I call your name. David Farbach and Patricia Farbach Gary, children of Carl Farbach. Tom Reeves, two sons, Brad and Scott. Eric Farmer and Dana Farmer Silber, children of Floyd Farmer. Eric Grooms and Nancy Grooms Rawls, children of Etta May and John Grooms. The late Ann Katzenmeyer Prentice and Kay Katzenmeyer Hinnenkamp, daughters of Albert and Marion Katzenmeyer. The seven King children, Gary, Terry, Julie, Dina, Lori, Lisa King, and the late Mary Lynn King Boyer. John Wilson and Elizabeth Wilson Winterbone, children of Helen and Ben Wilson. Two of the players were also fathers to very young children. Valerie Kimmel Edwards, daughter of Mallory Kimmel, David and Derek Robinson, the sons of Eugene Robinson. Each year, a floral remembrance is placed on the memorial to acknowledge the lives lost. There is a wreath at the Memorial 70, and today a wreath will be placed on the 50-yard line by one player representing the gold plane and one player representing the black plane. Mike Bruce is a crash survivor from the gold plane. John Straka was a player on the Black Plane. On this 50th anniversary, Mike and John will lay the floral tribute on the 50-yard line behind us in remembrance. In remembrance of those who died, Joe Kleinsaucer, co-director for News and Media Relations, will read the names of the deceased after the wreath is placed on the 50-yard line. After the final name is read, we will have a musical selection by Nathaniel Thomas, one of our talented students from the School of Music.
Marvin G. Brown, Jr. Donald E. Christian. John W. Duran. Martin E. Harrison. Ronald G. Johnson. Randall B. Keesaw. Mallory W. Kimmel. Carl R. Kruger. Stephen A. Moore. Thomas B. Eugene Robinson. Thomas T. Shedden. Richard N. Steins. John R. Taylor. Jack R. Vetter, Jr. Raymond Coleman. Maxine Coleman. Carl G. Farbach. Floyd W. Farmer. John Grooms. Etta May Grooms. Albert Katzenmeyer. Marion Katzenmeyer. Raymond King. Yvonne King. Thomas A. Reeves. Ben Wilson. Helen Wilson. Dan Crocker. Judy Dunn. Judy Lane.
Thank you, Nathaniel. Nathaniel sang Where Have All the Flowers Gone, written by Pete Seeger. This song was sang at the first remembrance 50 years ago by Diana Carruthers, who was then a sophomore at Wichita State University. Diana Carruthers Conrad returned to sing the song again at the 25th anniversary remembrance. The Memorial 70 sculpture was dedicated on November 28, 1971. It was a culmination of the efforts of hundreds of concerned individuals, both inside and outside the university community. The architect was Schaefer, Shermer, and Elfin. The general contractor was Donlinger and Sons Construction Company. For 49 years, the memorial has remained unchanged, but recently there have been some augmentations that enhance the beauty of the living memorial as a place of remembrance in honor of the lives affected by the tragedy. Eight WSU players survived the crash of the gold plane. The survivors were Michael Bruce, John Hoheisel, Randy Jackson, Glenn Costell, David Lewis, Frank Keith Morrison, Robert Renner, and Richard Stevens. Please direct your attention to the video screen. This recently installed Survivors Monument bears the name of the eight WSU players that survived the crash of the gold plane on Mount Trelease on October 2nd, 1970. It is positioned between the two original Monument 70 structures. <laughs> Directly behind and left of the monument is the Randy Jackson Survivor Tree donated by the Bel Air Tree Board in memory of crash survivor Randy Jackson. The tree is a seedling from the survivor tree that sustained the Oklahoma City bombing blast on April 15, 1995. Randy passed away in July 2010 after a battle with pancreatic cancer. On October 2, 1970, the black plane landed safely in Utah. The 35 passengers on the plane were told about the crash after landing. Some of the black plane passengers have passed away in recent years, but many of them are here today and some are watching via the live stream. If you are in the stadium, will the passengers of the black plane please stand as I call your name? Warren Barkell. Ray Burford. Kim Conklin. Kelly Cook, Rusty Featherstone, Bruce Gurleyman, 
Don Gilly, Bill Glasgow, Charles Harrington, Bob Hayes, Mike Knoll, Bob Crystal, Mark McClellan, Dave Newcomer, Ed Plapa, John Smith, Chuck Stoner, John Straka, Lou Tabor, Lino Vinernucci, George Whitfield, Monty Wooster, John Euros, Gus Greeby, Fred Conti, Tom Moore, Dennis Patterson, Chuck Ramsey, Bob Seaman, Bob Tucker, Conrad Downing, Ed Evans, Craig Leonard, Del Mullen, and Dr. Dwayne Murphy. Thank you all for being here. It's appropriate to note that the idea for the addition of the survivors' names and the names of the passengers of the black plane came from Randy Phillips. Randy transferred to Wichita State in 1971 to play quarterback and help the team rebuild. Bill Moore stepped up to help Randy by starting a fundraising drive to help with the new additions to complete the story with the help of Anne Marie Sigworth of the WSU Foundation. Randy is a partner at the Wichita architectural firm of Sprackenberg Phillips Tice Architecture. The tributes to the survivors of the, and the Black Plain were designed by Randy Phillips with the help from graphic designer Jason Ritter. The installation was completed by Miracle Sign Company. Let's give a special round of applause to Randy Phillips and Bill Moore for their work on bringing the memorial enhancements to fruition and the donors to the Memorial 70 project. I'd like to share a quote from President Alberg from the original November 1971 dedication. For those who are gone from us now, this is a living monument to our love and our remembering, and it shall always so remain. For those who follow us in the years ahead, may it speak of our love for those we have lost and affirm for all to see and understand the reservoir of kindness that is present in mankind and the ultimate oneness of all life. Memorial 70 has been a living monument to the love and our remembering of those that died as a result of the gold plane crash. It's also a monument to those that survived the gold plane crash and those that landed so safely on the black plane in Utah that mourned their friends and colleagues. Memorial 70 is one part of the living memorial an endowed scholarship bears the names of the members of the university community who lost their lives. Plane crash survivor Rick Stevens begins a ride to remember tomorrow morning. Over the years, Rick has cycled on behalf of the Memorial 70 Scholarship Fund, and the same is true this year. Scholarships awarded from this fund have supported the education of children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, and those that were nieces and nephews of those that were lost and those who survived. As you look for ways to honor the memories of those most affected by this tragedy, please consider a donation to the WSU Foundation for the Memorial 70 Scholarship Fund in support of Rick's Ride to Remember. Rick will head west toward Colorado tomorrow at 8 a.m., and he's leaving from the memorial near 18th and Hillside. Riding along with Rick will be Kelly Harrison and Paul Harrison. They are cycling for six days and finishing up near Kiowa, Colorado on Thursday, October 8th, and they will stay in Silver Plume area on Friday night. Then at 10 a.m. on Saturday, October 10th, they will assemble at the roadside memorial to climb to the crash site. All are welcome to join them on campus at Memorial 70 tomorrow morning for the send-off or in Colorado for the climb to the crash site. 
please reach out to Rick's daughter, Sarah Stevens Selman, for more information. Sarah, if you're here, would you please stand so people can identify you? She's right over here. So if you have, if you want more information, reach out to Sarah. The Memorial Seventy Scholarship Fund, along with the memorial structure, will continue to give testimony to the feelings of loss and remembrance experienced by all who were affected by the tragedy. Before I close the program, I want to remind you of other activities and tribute locations on campus as well and say some thank yous. A screening of Overshadowed, the Wichita State football plane crash, is scheduled to begin at 11 a.m. in the CAC Theater. This mini doc originally aired Monday, September 7, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. on Fox KDVR in Denver. The reporter Jeremy Hubbard is a Wichita State alum working in Denver. The viewing will also include a photo montage from previous remembrances. A luncheon reception for Memorial 70 players, families, and friends will be hosted by Bruce Gurleyman and Bill Moore at the Wichita Country Club located at 8501 East 13th Street. The Country Club has reserves, been reserved from noon to 4 and has ample space to accommodate social distancing with indoor and patio seating. Lunch will be a deli buffet that will be served by the Wichita Country Club staff from 1230 to 2 and there is a cash bar available and donations will be accepted. Wichita State University, the WSU Foundation, the Athletic Department, and the Alumni Association are sponsoring the local public broadcasting KPTS Channel 8 airing of the documentary Black and Gold, Remembering the WSU Plane Crash at 8 p.m. this evening. This documentary was produced by KPTS in 2009. I encourage you to tune in tonight and get the first look at the addendum to the documentary featuring the additions to the memorial. The Shocker 70 room at 202 Radigan Student Center is also open. There will be a floral tribute and looping PowerPoint featuring those who died as a result of the plane crash. The Memorial 70 display case on the Coke Arena concourse has pictures of the deceased and the certificate for the Wichita Sports Hall of Fame. Crash survivors of the gold plane, passengers on the black plane, and 70 members, please meet at memorial and there will be a photographer there to stage and properly social distance everyone and anyone may visit the memorial 70 site near 17 or excuse me 18th and hillside at your leisure there will be morning refreshments on the concourse behind you immediately following this remembrance ceremony and if you did not pick up your special 50th anniversary pin they will be available in the concourse during the reception as well I want to thank all of you who gathered today to share in this remembrance ceremony. And a special thank you goes to Sign Gypsies Wichita for providing the signs on the field behind us. And today would not be, um, would not be appropriate uh, to not acknowledge Carmen Heisch and all that she does for this family throughout the year. So thank you, Carmen, for all you do. After the closing prayer by Melissa Hasty, please join me for refreshments on the concourse. And again, thank you for coming and participating in this 50th remembrance. Melissa. Let us pray. Spirit of life and love, we give thanks for your presence in each of us. We give thanks for this chance to come together and remember. We remember the stories of that day. We remember the friends, family, teammates, and shockers that we have loved and lost. We give thanks that tragedy, death, and destruction are not the final word. Life continues on. New relationships are forged. In this time and place, may our lives again be bound together in thanksgiving for those who have gone before us and for the opportunities that lie ahead. Give us courage to recognize, respect, and celebrate our differences, that together we might arrive at a greater understanding of the mystery and wonder of life. Help us to honor the memories of this day and let us be a light for each other on our way forward with love and learning, humanity and grace. Amen.
that concludes the service. Thank you. We made it. We done. Socially distance at all. That's right.